Hi guys, I'm Clinton and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com and today we are going to take you beyond the Photoshop basics. So this is the image here that we're going to do first and what this is going to focus on is curves and how curves are one of the most powerful adjustment layers in Photoshop and I use them in nearly every workflow. But what I'm going to focus on today is how to match the colour and tone of your background or anything when you bring composite elements in in Photoshop. So if we look at this guy here, this guy was a model that I shot in the studio and we have more of a, I guess, a reddy orange kind of feel to the image. And then this background here is obviously blue. So what we need to do to make this composite work is we need to match the color tone of this guy here, the crazy uh, Mad Max style Viking warlord person. And we need to add the hues or some of the colors what are in the background to this guy here and I do this with curves and if you've watched any of my videos you'll know that curves is something I use all the time. So let's just click on the model image here and then let's go up to this panel here and this is the curves adjustment here so if you click on this little icon you'll get the curves adjustment what comes up here and let me just quickly talk a little bit about what you see in the curves adjustment box. So as you can see, it looks a bit like a camera histogram. So you've got the shadows on this side. And then as you move along here, you've got your darks to lights. And there's a little gradient here that shows you that. So if you play around moving the curve in this area, you'll it'll play with the darks. Say if you play with the, the curves in this area, it will adjust the midtones. And if you play with the curves at this end, it will adjust the lights. So let me just show you. So if I make a point here, so you can this line here, this is your curve and you can create little points just by clicking on it like so and then you can move the curves line around so let me just get rid of those so if you want to get rid of some of the dots you've just put onto the curves you just click on it and then quickly swipe it to the side off and out of the box it disappears so say if we want to play with the mid-tone all you do is you click in the center here where the mid-tone is the mid-tone point and then you can pull the mid-tones up and you can pull the mid-tones down like so so let's just whip that off there again and i'll show you again so this is the darks so if i move that up as you can see it's making the darks lighter lighter and then if you move it to the right it's making the darks darker and same for the right hand side with the lights pull it this way it makes them brighter if you pull it down it makes the lights darker so basically that's how you play with tone in a image so that's one thing so when you bring your composite element in you will need to match the tone of the background but then what if it's a completely different color balance like this guy here he was shot in a different area uh, he was shot in the studio he was shot with different lights so he's got a different color temperature so how do we change the colors using curves well what we need to do is if you go up to this little box here what says rgb you can then find your color curves so if you want to play around with blues, you click the blue color curve. So the opposite of the RGB is CMYK. So you've got red here, but the opposite of that would be cyan. And then if you go down to green, the opposite of that would be magenta. And then the opposite of blue is yellow. And then the K is basically black. Um, but I think that's more for printing, I believe. So for example, let's go to green. If you pull it left, you get the green. But if you pull it to the right, you get the magenta. Go up to red, you've got your red, and you've got cyan. And then you go to blue, got your blue obviously, and you've got your yellow playing in here. So let's just go back and get rid of all those adjustments, what we've done so far. Let's double click on, let's create our curves adjustment again. And now let's go in and do this for real. What we're going to do is we're going to match the darks and we're going to match the color just using curves. So for this image here, obviously the light is coming from behind the model. We've got a little bit of rim light here. We've got a bit, little bit of rim light here, but what we want to do is maybe darken in just a little bit. So if you click on the histogram or on the curves here, and if you just pull down a little bit and you can just darken him, it'll darken the mid-tone, but then you've still got these uh, nice rim lights what are still staying quite bright. 
So I'm just going to pull it down because when you create a composite, you want it to make it look realistic. I go for photorealism. People, other people like tend to prefer the moment surrealism. Um, but again, that's preference. So what we've done now is I've just pulled that curve down and we have darkened the model. So we've got the tone match, tonal matching doing the lights and the darks. So what we need to do now is we need to do the color matching. I believe it's always better to do that with another curves adjustment. You don't want to do it on the same one. So let's go and create another one. So we go up to the adjustments panel here. We click on the curves adjustment and that should create a new curves adjustment right here. So now we need to go into the color curves and looking at this image, we probably want to add some blue and some cyan in. So let's go to the blue. I'm going to click here and I'm just going to pull it to the left. And as you can see, that's bringing a blue into our image, but it's affecting the background. So what we need to do is we need to clip these adjustments to our model. So it only affects the model and not the background. So let's hold down alt. And if you hover over the layers here, this little square appears. And if you click it, that adds your clipping mask like so. And then if we add another one here, that, that, that clips all your adjustments to the model. So it doesn't affect the background and it only affects the model. So if we turn the black, the tonal curves off now, what we did where we played around with the darkness, as you can see, it's only affecting the model, not the background. And just by darkening it like that, it already looks a little bit more realistic. But now we're adding the colour in, so the colour's going to even make that more realistic and blend our model in with the background. So let's go back into our curves. So we've added some blue in, so now I think a little bit of cyan could be added in. So I'm going to click on the red. Opposite of red is cyan. And then we're going to just bring a little bit of that in. So around here, you have to be subtle with this sometimes. So somewhere like that should work. Let me just click that off. So that's without the color adjustments. As you can see, it's more of a warm tone. Don't really fit in with the image. We then add our color curves in and now it fits into the image perfectly. So that may seem very simple and it is, but lots of people don't tend to do this. What I've seen recently is people bring elements in and then they try and unify all the colors with by just putting a color a global color grade over everything and in my opinion that's not the best way to do it you need to color match every single element and then still color grade at the end but you get a much uh, more united feel to the image so that's basically it for this image and you saw how easy it was i wanted to show you an easy example first and now let's jump into another image and this could be a little bit harder but that's the fun of it isn't it let's let's get stuck in if you like this video and the techniques in it, be sure to check out my Hollywood processing course. In this premium course, we cover how to take your images from boring to Hollywood with styling tips, light tricks, dodge and burn, and much more. The link for that is in the description. Check it out. So let's click onto the next image. So we've got this image here. So this was for a client called Megan McDuffie, who is a synthwave music artist in America. So. And what I did is I created a series of promotional images for her, for her album, for Spotify. But what I'm going to do in, is go in and then colour match this as well, because I think this also would be a good example. It's a little bit more complicated, but we'll see how it goes, because we've got this tank machine thing here that I built from stock imagery. And then we've got the model here, Megan, who was shot in the studio. She was actually shot by a different photographer because she's in America. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult when I'm in the UK. So she got a photographer to shoot her and then sent me the image. So let's go in and start playing around with these elements. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use curves to tonal match and color match this tank here. So let's go to the tank and let's add a curves adjustment. Let's again use the clipping mask uh, and let's just clip that to the tank. So we've got our curve, so I think the tank needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to just pull down the mid-tone like so. And we'll have the tank as a, as a base point for the model. So let's pull that down. So for now, I think that's it for the tank. So let's now get into the model here. So this is the model layer. So let's click on that and then let's click the curves adjustment. Let's hold down all and then let's just clip this curves adjustment to the model so it only affects the model and not the background so what i'm going to do now is i think i'm just going to start by pulling down the mid-tones and now as you can see as i pull down the mid-tones it seems to 
the saturation seems to be stronger so we will deal with that later but let's have a look let me just undo that with Control z what happens if maybe i just darken this way so i can dark i pulled down the highlights a little bit so let's try here and then i'm going to pull down the midtones a little bit i think somewhere like there is a nice contrast but again obviously we've got she's oversaturated and also she's just too warm so now we've got that what i'm going to do is create another curves adjustment and now i'm going to deal with the color and i am going to clip that by holding alt and clipping it to the model layer let's go in and start playing with the colors so again in this image we've kind of got blues and we've got pinks so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add, start adding some blue into the model so let's put to the left here like so and then let's go into the red color curves and we're just gonna i'm gonna add some cyan in somewhere around here so i'm just pulling that to the right and that's adding cyan in i tend to when i'm color matching it's mainly blue i'm losing the blue channel or the red channel uh, it's not very often i use the green uh it, i do but it, i would say that like 80 percent of the time it's either the red or the blue channel i'm using and i'll be adding uh blue or magenta uh, sorry cyan into the model so let's now let's just click that off and on so as you can see that's the color difference so what we can do now is maybe she doesn't look actually look overly saturated now but what we could do if you did think she was too saturated you could use a hue saturation adjustment layer if you clip that with alt to the rest of them you can then just play down the saturation just a little bit but i think actually for me now I've color matched, the saturation is pretty good. So what I might do again is I would probably want to darken this tank a little bit more, but maybe the bottom part of it and not the top. So let's, because it's non-destructive, we can jump back into our tank layer. Let's pull down those mid-tones a little bit more. So we've still got the detail of the tank, but it's not taking our eye away from the model, who is the focus and there we go i think that's pretty much color matched for me obviously because i knew before i shot the image i was gonna have some kind of neon lights in at the um i told megan we did we had a chat and she said oh well like we'll use some gels to shoot some rim light on the on the back here so straight away we've got the pink kind of neon here but it's matching with the pink neon here so there is other, other elements you need to think about when you are color matching but as you can see curves is so simple to use and it can match all your elements that you bring into photoshop and you need to do this with every single element so let me just show you what was the final image so this is the final image with dodge and burn and with a few more elements and details put in but as you can see it looks pretty cool if you did find this video helpful be sure to check out my video on the full check because when you're using composites and you you want to color match maybe you need a little guidance the full check can help with that guidance and i did a video just on that so be sure to check that out